Hi, I'm Becca Otis from Five Lines Pottery in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm Ryan Durbin from RD Ceramics located in Southgate, Kentucky. And welcome to Wheel Talk. Hey guys, we've loved answering all of your questions so far. If you'd like to hear your question on the podcast, please send them to us on Instagram at Wheel Talk Podcast or by email to wheeltalkpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks. Oh, oh, I know we clicked at not the same time. Well, we're delayed. I think we're, we'll be good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Do you want to restart it? Okay. No. All right. Hello. Hello. We're live. Live. And for the second show in a row, Becca is using Rebecca's microphone because my microphone died. And we thought it was a cable. It was not. I think something happened to it. I think it like fell over or something accidentally or something. It's something had to. I, maybe I'll. I can take it apart before I uh, <clears throat> buy a new one. Yeah, you're pulling up a video, and it said at the beginning it was like, if you're gonna do this, you need to have a good intermediate knowledge of, of soldering. Soldering. <laughs> soldering. And I just started laughing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I could probably do it. Like, I could probably solder it. I've done it before, but I don't have any of the stuff to do it. Can you solder with one of those, like, wood-burning things? Like, you would do, like, designs with wood-burning? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just have to have the right material to solder onto it. it. But I think it's, like, a different temperature, too. I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't know. It's been so long. Like, college. Hmm. Okay. That seems like a poor man soldering to me. (laughs) <laughs> mm, the white the white trash solder yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great um how are you not much studio time today so i'm a little bit computered out but um bummed yeah so many meetings this week you would think like Ugh. coming back to work after the new year people are like all right we're gonna ease back into it but it's just been yeah. so many meetings and i'm like all right. And I'm somebody that's like, I like to get alone time so I can actually do some work. And if you're yeah. just jumping from meeting to meeting and, and then when you do get alone time, you're like, all right, it's three o'clock. I better eat some lunch. Um, or else somebody's going to ping me and I'm not going to. Um, and then I, I get no time to like do anything that is like actually heads down working on something. Yeah. And you know, the day just goes by and I'm like, did I get anything done this week? You know, I have a question. Sure. Are you, when you go to work, like, okay, so you're a software developer, website developer. Yep. Website developer. So when you do work, um, do you have like, like project dates that you need to get stuff done by? Yeah. Or, yeah, I would say that we work, um, The kind of methodology is called Agile, which is where you're kind of like working as a team on like two week sprint. It's called sprints. So you're working it two weeks at a time and you Mm -hmm. kind of commit to a body of work, which is a set of tickets that you think your team can accomplish in those two weeks. Okay. So you're kind of divvying up tasks with the people on the team and you have to get things from like start to complete within those two weeks, ideally. And a lot of things that don't get done, they carry over to the next sprint, and you try to get those done in the next two weeks. Um, okay, but it's not like life or death if you don't finish it. Like, no. this week you had a bunch of meetings. No, but it, there's... But I also do, like, work for two other teams that have their own sprint cycles of, like, what they expect to get done. So I'm kind of, like, doing work for more than one team. So Why are you in the superhuman... <clears throat> track like what the fuck are you a team leader i'm kind of so the one group that i work with is more of like a supervisorial kind of work like a team lead kind of thing like a team like a developer lead captain you're the captain i'm like i would say like lead developer is kind of what the role would be considered okay i'm technically like a senior web developer and there's you're the top banana me and another guy kind of like share responsibility so we're like the top of the front end development team okay and there's like three different developers that are under us that do 
honestly, they do a lot of the work. A lot of the tickets that are done in those two weeks, they're doing a lot of that work. But we're kind of like managing what's coming up next and making sure that we have all the details we need to carry out those tickets and like get them to a completed state. Yeah. Or if they run into roadblocks, like we help give them like some guidance of like, hey, maybe you should look at this implementation that we've done in the past. Um, or like, you know, if they get stuck somewhere and they need to figure something out, like we can come in and help. But a lot of the meetings are like figuring out what's coming next or like some other thing that needs to launch in like two weeks and we have to have a one hour meeting about it now or, you know, different things that we have meetings about. So, yeah, once you get to a point where you aren't just like working on tickets, what I would consider like web developer role, you're like senior development or like team lead, you're doing a lot of meetings and like you know, strategizing with other, like, heads of teams. It's really exciting to hear about your, like, work life because you're kind of like a, you're kind of like, I don't know, sometimes it feels like we're still young, you know? It still feels like we're, like, fresh out of college. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like, at least. But then, like, when I hear you talk about, you know, I'm the team lead and shit like that, and I'm like, wow, you're, like, developed, yeah, I mean, I've been you know? in this industry since 2013, since I graduated right, from college. Like, so, like, I'm not a spring yeah. chicken in this. It's just nine years Correct. of doing yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, wow, like, you're, like, you know, you're doing, you're, like, doing the lead stuff, and you're not, like, just some, some like, hustler, like, yeah. in the company, you know? It's kind of cool to be, like, yeah. yeah. And then the, friends, the other teams that I, I like, work them. with, I'm... I am the technical person on that team. Everybody else on that team right. is more business oriented or they're, they have different skill sets. So they could be like UX heavy or they could be like an expert in the different um, application that they're a part of. Like we, that makes like sense. we have people that are in charge of our like chat bot application, which is what helps like drive leads, marketing leads to become customers and spend money. So, like, there's somebody in charge of that, and I'm, like, a technical person that helps that tool function. So, the people I work with on there, like, they rely on me to know stuff and be able to, like, carry out the things they need to get done. So, if I'm pulled on these other things, then they're kind of waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? So, it's kind of weird. It's kind of overwhelming because there's so many people that, like, rely on you to help with things. Yeah. And you're like, Jen. Um, yeah, I need help here. <laughs> <laughs> Jen it works at AT&T or DirecTV or whatever they are now. And she's like that. She's the, the she's all, uh, as far as I know, or at least when we talk like about that stuff, she's like the, the person that's in the team. That's like the tech, the software developer Yeah. for them. Yeah. I, um, I have to tell you, you know, what's funny is that, okay, when we did Christmas together, so I am seeing somebody for everybody out there in the world. Um, not that it's that important, but, um, when you were telling him what company you were looking at Mm -hmm. that you worked at, he was on his phone Googling everything while you were talking because you kept saying, like, big words and shit. Like, I had no fucking idea what you were talking about. Yeah. You're like, DDS or something like that. And he was, like, over on his phone, like, Googling. He like, was, <laughs> I think he asked, like, what is a, what, can you show me, like, a website that you've worked on? Because usually you say, what yeah. do you do? I'm a web developer. That's, like, the generic yeah. term. And then if they follow up, then you could be, like, I'm technically a senior web developer, so I kind of manage people. Yeah. Sort of. But I also do technical things that I actually am making code you're like the art director and you know you have to get in and like do work yeah at times but you also have a lot of bullshit meetings that you have to do to keep things on the tracks and keep them moving yeah sweet yeah fun stuff it's all right wow that was really exciting (laughs) (laughs) and then it's so vague like i don't know how to explain it if you know but yeah so that was my day-to-day and most of the week honestly so 
I'll be happy to get... I, I did get some time on the wheel, though, this week. That was good. I got some time to just throw mugs, and... Um, I got somebody coming this weekend that I think is going to be joining me as a studio assistant. And I also mm. put that out there. We talked at the end of the last episode about the production pottery. Yeah. And I got a couple people I'm scoping out for that to potentially help me out there with throwing some shot glasses, spoon rest kind of thing. So how many do you want total? Cause my understanding <clears throat> was that you wanted more than I think that you do. I mean, I think the immediate need is when I hit the spring, I want to have like, you know, five or 600. Okay. I mean, maybe more, mm, at least like 300 per clay body, I think would mm -hmm. give me some peace of mind that, Okay, I can carry this through. But, I mean, sometimes I'll get a wholesale order for, like, 50. And those 50 are yeah. out the door quickly. Um, I need to look at my numbers of what I threw last year. Like, how many shot glasses I threw last year. And that'll give me a sense of, you know, how many do I need to expect to make this year. And probably scale it up from what last year was by, like, maybe yeah. a few hundred. Yeah. And Okay, because... If you do not find anybody, I can come down there and throw 500 for you in a weekend. You're going to throw 500 in a weekend? Easy. Off the hump. Are you kidding me? Okay. Yeah, when I posted that, um, Rebecca wrote me and was like, have you thought about just asking Becca to help? <laughs> and then uh, and then she mentioned another person you work with, and um, yeah, I did reach out to Merritt, so... She's going to get back she to me. She said she's, she goes, I'm thinking about it. Okay. I honestly didn't want to <laughs> overwhelm her um, because, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I yeah. always try to, like, try to make it flexible for them. Like, I don't know what they're expecting. Yeah. And I, I get that this time that is worked on this thing, for me, is going to take away from time that she could work on her own stuff. So I understand yeah, that. Totally. And I want to make sure it's flexible for for their uh their needs and then i got a couple we other actually... things and i was like you know do you and then i had to go down the list of like kind of filtering criteria of like you know do you throw off the hump you throw? or you know <laughs> have you you've seen what i make like can do you think you could do that and then they're you know they might say something about like oh i can throw i'll throw them individually maybe or i can try throwing off the hump i haven't thrown off the hump or you know those kind of things and then I'll be like, okay, yeah. do you have a lot of bats? Can we maybe go the spoon rest route? Like, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. We were actually talking, me, Merritt, and Sarah at work today. We're actually kind of like talking about that, but then we kind of like moved into another thing. And it was like, um, like, you know, the difference... Like me, I'm a production potter. You can give me whatever you want to give me, and I'm going to be fine with throwing it. doesn't matter. Um, some people, uh, Sarah's a production potter, essentially. Merritt's an artist. Like, she is a potter, and she does production to make money. To pay the but bills. and Yeah, but she really wants to do art. You know, like, f fine ceramics, you know? And so we were kind of talking about, like, the difference in your approach when you, like, are more business-oriented or more, like, craft or, like, uh, fine art-oriented mm -hmm. or more, like, production-oriented, you know? And, like, how, you know, uh, to me, if somebody threw me... 500 shot glasses I'd be like yeah no problem I can do that like because production pottery is my business you know and to somebody like Merritt it might be and this is I'm not saying this is how she um thinks or anything but you know it might be something like well I kind of want to do my own stuff in my own time mm -hmm. and I could make three mugs for the price of those yeah, you know. she can make and sell, have to sell and take them from start to finish, three mugs for what she's going to make. Right. From... Yeah, and yeah, and so, like, is that something you, like, you know, you have to, like, weigh your options of what you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, and how you want to make your money and how you want to spend your time. And it was kind of, like, interesting how we all kind of differ mm -hmm. 
in the way that we would, you know. Yeah. And I tr- yeah, it was cool. Yeah, and I think the, was- you know, the need, I think, is, you know, before the spring hits. So I was trying to be pretty yeah. flexible of, like, I want this to not kill your schedule. Like, I don't need them in, like, two weeks. You know, if you want to totally. if you want to spend two hours a week doing this, yeah. like, if you can fit two hours a week do- making these and make yourself some money and yeah. get some you know yeah and she like have, like i said she you know hasn't decided that kind of thing <laughs> could work for somebody or maybe they're like you know what i just need a pro- like i'm not really feeling like making stuff right now so like i kind of want something to distract me and i know that i'm getting money from it so you know that yeah. could be perfect for somebody in the winter right exactly yeah and she like she hasn't decided but um it'll be interesting like if she does she's a she's fantastic she's she's such a good production potter like She's such a good potter, just generally. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. What's new with you, though? Did we talk anything about how your week's going? Today was my today? last day of work before the, the trip, the month long trip. How exciting! It is month long trip. How exciting! So, when's your next day back to work? Um, my next day back to work, let me look at my calendar, is February 14th. Wow. Yeah. So is that, um, because when Rebecca wrote me, she, she made it sound like there could be some tasks to go around. Like, are you all in a slower cycle now anyways? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a, we're in a pretty small cycle, or a slow cycle. So, um, but... Yeah, I am headed to, let's see, I wrote out my whole, I got a planner. What? Oh my God. <laughs> what <laughs> is this? I got, who is this? Is, I know. Okay, so um, Savannah, who works at Graves Co., is a planner artiste. <laughs> she is like, she has this planner that she's had for like three years or some shit like that, and it is fucking beautiful it should be in a fucking museum it's gorgeous like i was just flipping through it i'm like this is phenomenal she does like drawings in it and stuff like that and i was like i really want to try to do this but i need to make it work for me so i got a notebook that does have like little tiny um headings on the top that like you can circle the month and then the date um if you want but it's a grid lined Mm -hmm. you know planner and it's like eight by four or eight by six i think so it's a bunch and of grid it's a grid of like days so it's like a no, whole it's week just a on grid. a page it's, oh it's just a, okay. n- no it's just a grid so there's no weeks no days nothing like okay you know so you can do whatever you want in it so i like drew out a whole calendar mm-hmm. and or like a whole month and then did the next month and and i planned out where i'm going on my trip cool so i'm going to i'm leaving on Sunday afternoon, I'm going to your house, and then we're going to um, put all of your cups in my car. I bought a bed off of Amazon so I could sleep in the back. Did it fit? Not in, not in the cold weather. Yes, it does. Um, but it's not fluffy enough. Like it's not poofing out. You know how like the beds kind of like poof. Mm-hmm. Like when you get, it didn't <laughs> when you get it them, didn't expand. It didn't it didn't poof. So it like poofed on one side, but not on the other side. And I've heard that that's the way it works. So I mm. might return it. Is that so you just... can collapse it and like fold it up? Yeah, it is. It's a chi- It's a Japanese style futon mattress. So you can like collapse it and put it in a bag. So we'll see. I'm going to sleep on it and we'll see how it okay. is. It's pretty freaking cold uh, out there tonight. I don't know. Is oh, it, it's is snowing, it snowing here. there. Like, yeah. it's... I'm not planning on sleeping in my car in the eastern states. We're talking West California, yeah. Las Vegas, okay. you know. Um, so I'm going to uh, Kansas City, staying the night at friends, then going to uh, Colorado, staying the one day at my parents' house, and then off to Utah on Thursday, and then we'll be at Claycon West until Sunday, and then on Sunday night or Monday morning, I'm going to Jen's house in L.A., and then on... Friday or Thursday, I think I'm gonna go back to Las Vegas because Andrew, my best friend, is doing the trade show out there for a week. So hopefully I can wow get in on his hotel, and mm-hmm. or he might be sleeping in the truck. I don't know. And um, 
if he is, then we'll be neighbors. And uh, then I'm going to go up the coast, Oregon, or Redwoods, Oregon, and then Washington coast, and then into Washington, and visit Val, and all the people in Monroe. And then I want to go to Leavenworth, but... They just got 26 to 30 inches of snow today, so I don't know if that's gonna. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Like this is their time that they get the most snow. Um, and that snow so probably doesn't have time to melt much, does it? No, it just gets removed or like pushed, <laughs> or packed, pushed or packed. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm gonna go there, and then I might go back to Colorado for a day on my way to Kansas, and then when I get to Kansas, I will be working for Isaac until the 11th, and then I come back on the 12th. Wow. What a so. trip. Yeah. I'm and excited. you got it all I mean, planned out. Like, I've got the places planned out and the approximate dates, mm-hmm. you know, because that kind of needed to happen. But um, I... What I'm excited... I'm excited because... I've always wanted to be able to just take a month, mm-hmm. you know, like financially it's never been able to make, to make sense. And this, I'm actually making more money on this trip than I would working at Gravesco just by working for, um, like, you know, hitting the pavement at Isaac's and then yeah, working at click on West. Yeah. Isaac's click on West. You'll sell a bunch of pots there. You get paid there. Yeah. Do we get paid there? Well, I don't know. How did you get paid last year? Uh, I'm guessing you probably got a check remember. after, right? Yeah. I can't remember. Hopefully, I don't run out of money before I get to Isaac's. Yeah. <laughs> that is the one thing that I was like, meh. <laughs> like, I might have to pull from savings just to get through the month and then put it right back. But Would you ever, like, take a, uh, like take cash and be like, I have this much cash I'm going to see as long as I can go with this much cash and just see, like, instead of doing your car, like you said, you run out of money, like run out of money, but. Yeah. Um, I did that when I did my road trip. I stopped. But that's the reason I ended up in Connecticut. I literally ran out of money. Oh, really? Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, I need to get a job. Wait, that's when you actually ended up living in Connecticut? Like you stopped mm-hmm. and then you started working somewhere in Connecticut? Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I um, I stopped. Oh, God. Yeah, so I stopped in Putnam, Connecticut. was like, fuck, I can't go any farther. And then I... Um, How do you find a I job that this- quickly? And like... I'm about to tell you. So I... Um, I don't even know how this whole train of events happened, but I went to this yarn shop and I met this lady and then that lady introduced me to this art guy and then that art guy, um, somebody went to this church. And so then I ended up going to this church and then at this church, I met this lady named Jennifer and this lady named Jennifer at the church was like, do you need a job? And I was like, yes. And she's like, I actually need somebody. I'm looking for somebody to hire. And now... Meanwhile, I was doing temp jobs because I found like a temp agency and I started doing temp jobs just to get some money. And um, I was living in my car in the public parking lot across the street from a pottery shop called Sawmill Pottery, which is great. And um, yeah, and she was like, do you need a job? And I was like, yes. So I remember meeting her. This was also a week after Sandy hit, Hurricane Sandy, that I was living in my car. The lady that introduced me to the art guy actually let me crash at her house <laughs> during the hurricane. That was nice of her. And, um, and then I remember sleeping in my car in the, <laughs> in the exit, like in the, the, what is it, where you, like people park to get on the bus to go to work. Park and ride. ride. Yeah. In the park and ride. And I like got dressed at like seven in the morning, met her. And then she drove me to the, to the job to show it to me. And I got hired on the spot. And then, um, that day I found a place to live. And, uh, the lady that I (laughs) lived with or that I like found a place to live, it was a Craigslist ad. And I called her and she was like, oh my God, yeah, I have this other lady that's going to look at it, but it's this weird situation. She's handicapped. I don't know what's going on. I don't really trust her. 
I don't know, you sound great. And then she goes, you know what? I'm just going to call her and tell her not to come. Just over the phone? Yeah, over the phone. She's like, I'm going to call her and tell her not to come because you sound great. Uh, And then she calls me right back and she goes, you know what? I lost, I don't have her phone number. It's actually on my kitchen table at my house. Would you mind driving to my house? That you're going to be staying at? Going in, what? That you're going to be staying at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The like the lady that I'm talking to on the phone for Craigslist. Right. Literally never met this lady and she goes, Would you mind driving to my house? The the door's open. Could you go in? <laughs> the the phone number's on the kitchen table. <laughs> Get the loser's phone number and get me <laughs> <laughs> so that I can call her and tell her not to come. And I like found her address and I like went and I tried to find this place. I got fucking lost. And could never, I never actually found the house. She did find the number. And then that night I went to her house and she figured out that I was sleeping in my car. She's like, well, where are you staying now? And I was like, oh, you know, like, eh. and she's like, okay, you're sleeping here. <laughs> and I moved in that night. Wow. That's crazy. So what yeah. is the span of you getting the job and getting to Connecticut? Is that like a three day affair? Is that like a week? I got to Connecticut the week before hmm, week before Halloween. I'm still living in my car during Halloween, I think. Um, it was two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks after I got to Connecticut before I got a job, I think. Okay. Maybe a week and a half. So you're just like scouting out job options and seeing your way around and yeah, figuring out places to live and looking at Craigslist and... Yeah, like, I knew I wasn't going to find a place to live until I got a job. Right. And I really loved Putnam, Connecticut, so I wanted to stay in that area. So. Had you ever been there before? pizza place there. No. Okay. Nice. That was also where I found a fish in a a public toilet once. (laughs) It was a foot long. A foot long? Oh, my gosh. I thought you meant, like, a little goldfish somebody dumped in there. A foot long fish. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. I have a lot of stories that nobody knows about. Yeah, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I've i heard you say you lived in Connecticut, but I did not know the origin story there. Yeah. Wow. I also uh, made this hat in Connecticut. Well, from uh, this hat that I'm wearing from right now. From the yarn people? Weird... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they taught me how to knit better. I got there, and I was knitting backwards. <laughs> so... So, uh, knitting backwards like yeah, going the wrong direction or something kind of it's weird hmm. but yeah so interesting okay all right so do we want to uh what do we want to start today do we want to do you want me to read some of the uh feedback from the question i asked do you want to start yeah. there okay oh we should tell people that we're going to do our review for 2021 yeah, so the today. the kind of topic for today is we're going to go over how 2021 went for us, like personally, business-wise, and then share some of the highs, lows, uh, failure, yeah. goals, and stuff like that, and positive stuff. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think we're going to do a separate episode for 2022 and looking ahead. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, to start, I sent out a story to our uh, wheel talk instagram account and was asking people i saw this on another heard this on another podcast i can't remember i think it was a i think it was breaking points do you know what i'm talking it's like a political podcast it's with uh independent journalists independent political podcast that i listen to um oh nice and they uh they kind of shared a survey about like how do you think your 2022 is going to compare to 2021 for for you and um you know, I kind of asked it in two parts. It was like personally, and then for your business. So we'll start with uh, we'll start with the business since that's going to be relevant to to people here. Um, so I got a lot of better answers. I was expecting to get some highs and lows and some I don't know, yeah. I'm not sure. But I mean, a lot of stuff were saying like you know they think their skills have grown since last year. Which ideally, if you're making a lot of stuff, you should be your skills should be getting better and getting a little more confident in what you're making. So um, that's pretty good. And then, um, 
you know, some people said like better over uh, doubled my net income from 2020, did more and better craft shows, so that's good. Um, some people are getting more confident in their work. Looking forward to um, growing their hobby and you know start selling at art shows. Um, Lindy said better. I know more. I'll do more and get rid of what doesn't work and lean into what's working. So that's pretty good. When, when you can be self-aware to like figure out what's what's going well and what's not going as well. And yeah. Be oh my critical. gosh. I think about Lindy all the time because I actually, I don't know if you know this, but I met her on Clay Buddies. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I saw her vase that she made because she used to only do hand building and I saw a vase and I, te- I messaged her and I was like, hey, I want to buy that. And we ended up trading, I think, instead. Nice. Or I bought it. I don't know. But it's sitting on my, it's above my kitchen. I will look at it every day. Awesome. I think we need to get another <laughs> listener on the podcast to chat with. One of the MVPs yeah, out here. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, some people have a little more time to invest, so they're looking forward to that. Um, somebody said they got their first restaurant gig, projecting double income and making 50% more pots for next year as well. So, all right, that was that question. And then the other one for personal, I think uh, I was getting, I was expecting to get a kind of an assortment here, but I think generally people were saying about the same or better they were expecting next year to be. And, you know, so. The, the one other thing about the business that some people mentioned were like they were, I think one or two people mentioned that they were worried about the, the like supply chain of some of the ceramics materials. I, did you, were you aware of some of that stuff going on this year? Like, yeah, there was a big, um, hit to people that were expecting like Amico glazes. I know they had a big, you know, lull. I think Isaac had mentioned that to me before, like they have a they had such a yeah. Their under glazes are completely out right now. Yeah, and then I think Potter's Choice were having some slowdowns too, and yeah, like when you, I mean, it's hard to just say, hey, you need to just learn how to make glazes. Like that's not so easy for people, and when you're forced into having to do that, it's really a tough challenge. But um, I, I have commercial and my own glazes, so luckily I was okay and i wasn't running low on things um luckily i have not had to like get a lot of kiln equipment i don't know how that yeah that worked but i'm sure there were some impacts there with what whether people were getting new kilns or trying to get things took like, ours nine months yeah <laughs> like elements and stuff like that i probably need to get ahead of it and order some more elements actually yeah just to be sure i'm i'm not waiting when it comes to that time but, um, yeah, I'm thankful that mine mine's new, so I don't need to like worry about the elements for at least a while. It's only got 36 firings on it, but oof. Yeah, luckily I always take advantage of the Kentucky Mudworks sales too. So the glazes, I always get. I always have at least 20 pounds of the gla- the commercial glazes that I buy. Yeah. So the Mudworks Satin Black and Inferno Red, I always have at least 20 pounds of those. And then they do sales like 10 times a year. So yeah, I'm always on top of those sales. Like whenever they have them and I'm ready and I have the money to spend on it, I'll probably buy at least 10 pounds or 20 pounds if I have mixed up a glaze recently of that color. So I try to stock up when I can. Not to say like as long as you have the space to store that kind of stuff. But, you know, yeah, planning ahead is good for that kind also, of thing. that to sit to – talking about the you know just the supply and demand of pottery supplies right now it's a good um not reminder but it's a good time to maybe this is a good time to challenge yourself too like if if you've never made glazes before maybe this is a time to like go get some raw materials you know and uh give it a go and try try out a glaze yeah. yeah You know, and, like, try out, like, a foolproof one. If you want, message me. I have all my old glaze recipes. I can I can send you one, you know, if you want. 
What I mean, um, one great thing that you can try that will get you the experience of making a glaze without going from raw materials is getting dry mix. If you can get 10 pounds of dry mix, yeah. you at least get the process down of how you need to take that dry mix and get it to a liquid state and put yeah. it through a sieve because you're going to need a sieve. You're going to need the materials to like, you know, the brushes and stuff to get it through the sieve and the toilet brushes and whatever. The toilet Spatulas, brush, yeah. like that process you need to understand anyways if you're going to make your own glazes from raw materials, but at least yeah. that gives you some experience and something to yeah. try. But, the, the, you know, that may be a goal for 2022 since I don't think that our supply issue is going away. You know, this, the COVID supply issue is not going away. It's. Um, Do you think we got more people making pottery from the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. I do, but it's not it's not even the supply issues not because of the customers, it's because of the manufacturers. Well yeah, I'm saying you know? do you think there has been more demand for it besides the A little the bit, but I don't think enough to yeah, but I don't think enough to offset the manufacturers. Okay. Deep like you know. Yeah. Um lack thereof. I mean, so. I figure give it another year or two and there's gonna be a big influx of people getting rid of equipment too that got into it during Hopefully. the pandemic yeah and there might be some used equipment out there that you can jump on if it's available near you so yeah yep yeah but oh, cool. overall a lot of a lot of good personal um positives here i didn't see any you know negatives here necessarily a lot of people are looking forward to you know, having some clearer goals and uh, better work-life balance, stuff like that. So, yeah, a lot of positives here. As it should all. be. Yeah. And then the only other feedback was about any other thoughts. And mm, yeah, some of it's like just go with the flow, not try not to have too many expectations, hoping to pay off all my debt. That's good. Um. Somebody said their success of their business is closely tied in my mind to my personal success. Did you feel yeah, that as sure. you were, as you were like, I feel like if you're doing it full time for sure, like it's so intertwined that. It is, but I don't think it should be. Honestly. I, I think that now that I'm out of it, I think that I wish that I would have had more personal goals that weren't at all related to business. Like mostly like mental goals, you know, like taking breaks Just and good like for your health stuff. and good for your soul a little yeah. bit. Yeah, to... yeah. I wish that I would have like made that a priority uh, back then, but you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah. And then we'll finish this off. One person said, "Get your ass up! I've got pots to throw." To me, from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, a couple of people said they they felt like there was more support for small businesses in the last year. So yeah, and I valuing agree. valuing handmade and stuff. So that's that's definitely a positive for sure. So all right, thanks for that feedback, everybody. And then where are we going to now? <gasps> Let's talk. Oh yeah, we didn't even do like an outline or anything. Uh, shall we talk? Shall we get to sale? Like, shall we just zoom right Dude, into sales? Dude, go right to sales. Yeah, sales. <laughs> the fun part? Sure. So I... Do you want me to go to my kind of groupings of things and start somewhere? Sure. Would you like to hear how much I sold in 2021? Sure. Wait, do you want to guess? <laughs> The, and what you're saying sold is just your personal stuff? On Square. Yeah. On Square. Is that the only way you sell? Not on your website? Or your website is part of Square? Website yeah. goes through Squeebly. Square. Okay. Squeebly. Yeah. <laughs> um, 10,000. Oh, no. Not even fucking close. I don't know. 6,000. <laughs> 4000 I don't know. <laughs> uh, $4,974.10 is how much I collected. My net total is $4,814.99. Baby. Baby. <laughs> nice. 
that was really just from the last couple months. Like, there was, like, $100 or $500 in August. I mean, you had the Backyard Craft Show. You pro- that was probably August, right? That was August. Like, 544 was that. And then... And... Oh, yeah. And the night before was your mom, <laughs> I think. And then... Is there, like, a spike it, or, like, a little bump? A little... Whoop. Yeah. It looks like little lonely mountains. And then um, <laughs> in November, that really shitty show. And then the um, 1120 for one of the updates. And then like 800 something for the next one. So, Oh, no, 800 for... I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> but, yeah. Did you end up selling most of your shitty cup shitty... Uh, oh, that's the shitty stuff. cups. Yeah. 800, is, 800 is shitty cups. No, I still have so much. Really? So fucking much. I'm going to have to do a, when I get back, I wanted to do it before I left, but when I get back, I'm going to have to do a mystery sale just to get rid of all that shit. Are you going to take a handful to ClayCon West? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a kiln going right now with shitty cups and fancy cups, and I have the shitty cups that are nice. Do you have a sign Speaking ready? Of, do you have a little sign ready with a uh, shitty cup, fancy I was, cup? I was thinking about doing it on, <laughs> in pure Becca fashion, on a label <laughs> from the label printer. <laughs> that small? It's going to be like four by six label with the... Yeah, I don't have enough time to make like a legit sign. You need to take... Just guess... get a po- just get one of those like postcards or something. Or one of the... I could get like a piece of cardboard and do it on that. Do it? Yeah, do it on that. Tim would love that. Get a piece of uh, cardboard. Get a Sharpie. And we'll do it the night before. Yeah. Bring your stickers or Wheel Talk stickers if you have some. I think I have some Wheel Talk stickers. Okay. Man, we should have ordered some more. We did that last time. I remember I was sitting if in If you have some of your stickers, you could throw some of those to be sold if you want. You yeah. probably still have a lot of those. Nobody's going to have stickers oh, yeah. like that. Oh my god, Ryan, you're a fucking genius. If anybody I could sell to was there, I could do it there. Exactly. Yes. And they don't have to pay to ship it, just, you know. And it could be Fuck like yes. four for something or five for something or get the whole batch for whatever, you know. Oh my god, you're a fucking genius. I love you. As long as you could find them, hopefully they're findable. Are they findable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like all in a drawer. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure you've Thank, had those for Oh, I need to put that bit, on my so. to-do list. I need to put that on my... Yeah. I have a list for the trip. And then you can give them to people as you stop, too. Give some to Isaac or... Yeah. Love it. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that I need to go onto my website and just take all of the items off. <laughs> <laughs> just vacation uh, there's mode. nothing on the web sold out vacation mode for website <laughs> be back soon yeah so i'm hiding that while we talk okay uh what else what am i what am i mentioning for sales for the year am i doing everything or am i breaking it down let's talk about what your goal was for sales and what your full sales were okay so this is kind of broken out between show sales gallery sales and hold on show sales gallery sales and online and then i had a overall revenue for the whole year and i just realized i split out um wholesale and consignment together so okay ten five okay oh need to update that okay so We will start with uh, show sales since that was actually the biggest chunk of my sales. Okay. So I was hoping to increase my show sales to thirty thousand dollars. Last year I sold tw- about twenty two thousand dollars, and I sold th- a little over thirty eight thousand this year at shows. Fuck yes, that's great! Wow. And yeah, I mean you were at a couple of those shows like. That's the mm-hmm. Berea six thousand dollar weekend. Yeah, that was a lot. And uh, I had yeah I had some good shows. 
I can't remember the total number of shows that's over. I think that's probably about 25 shows. Yeah. And that could be just a farmer's market or that could be a three-day weekend show. And that's their equivalent. Like, those are each one sh- considered one show. So. I think it would be interesting if you made a goal. Like, obviously, you don't have to make this goal. But it would be interesting to, like, shoot for a goal of doing less shows with the same sales. Or less shows with more sales, you know, so you didn't have to like, yeah, kill I'm, yourself. Yeah, I'm looking at 22, and I'm, I'm thinking what shows I want to do, but I'm also like, I want to be able to do some other projects that are not completely yeah. driven by making for a show. But I do, I mean, I do love shows, and it's like, hey, if I can go to a show and I can sell eight or nine hundred bucks, like, cool. Yeah. But maybe it would be beneficial for me to like put those on the sideline not go to a show that i can sell 700 bucks at yeah or 900 bucks at if i pay more than 100 dollars at the booth for the booth or something yeah you know maybe it's time that i i do one of those a year, of that type of show a year or something or a couple because i tend to do those monthly markets where i'll go to west side market and sell in june in uh june august and september maybe Mm-hmm. possibly November and I'll sell it three or four of those a year. And on average I'm selling maybe 800 bucks at each one of those. Right. And the winter one is more like 1500 or something like that. So, yeah. you know, maybe I just go to one of those a year or two of those a year instead of every month. Right. And that might help my throughput. Um, and then the, the next category was increased gallery sales. I kind of consider gallery as consignment and wholesale together. Yeah, that makes sense. I put increasing that to five. I can't mute this and I have to cough. Hold on. <coughs> okay. I put uh, increase those sales to 5500 for the year. Last year I sold $4,500 between okay. galleries and uh, for consignment and wholesale. This year I sold a little over $10,000. What the fuck? A lot of that was because of the wholesale orders, I think. It looks like if we break that down, 7200 is consignment and 32 yeah, 7250 and then 3250 is wholesale. Wholesale was a lot bigger this year. Yay, that's great. And that was just a lot of those were shot glass orders. Probably, if I were to look at this as shot glasses, like, you know, two hundred dollars there, a thousand bucks there. Most of that was shot glasses. Yeah, I probably, I probably had half of these were shot glasses. Nice. And I was getting some reorders, like at least two, th- three of these wholesale places were reorders. So it's pretty good. I was pretty impressed with that. And I think I'll get more into this year. That That's kind of what's starting to stress me out a little bit is that I'm going to get called to have one of those orders that I need to restock. And it's going to be like, we need 50 shot glasses or we need 80 shot glasses. And it's going to drain me. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So that's the other one. And then we've got uh, another goal, sell $15,000 online minimum. Yeah, right. Last year, I sold 27000 online. This year I sold a little over twenty two thousand. Really? You sold less online yeah. this year? Well I had well if you think about it logically, I had what less time to focus on online. Fail. Whereas Fail. show wise. <laughs> so if we Fail. if so if we look at the show sales last year, twenty two thousand, online sales last year, twenty eight thousand just about. And then this year show sales thirty eight thousand. So an increase in, uh, you know, almost double, no, no, honestly. No. It's almost no, no, double no. the show sales goal? year over year. What was your goal? Okay. For selling online for this year? Uh, for shows, it was 30, and you got 38, so that's an 8,000 up, up swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what was your goal for um, 2021 for online? Uh, online. 15,000. Okay. Uh, what it, was le- yeah, and the that's a shitty goal. Your goal was less than what you even. Made does that make year. sense? That all the shows, a lot of shows, got canceled in twenty twenty. 
and it makes sense for me to set the same online goal as last year when there was half you know of what? the shows. You need to stop being so intelligent about your decisions <laughs> and start living on the edge a little. You need okay? to have an increased goal every year. <laughs> So let's see, what is the combined of those two? So 22 plus 38 is 60 between shows and online this year. And then if we were to do last year, shows 22 plus 28, 50. So 60 combined this year between shows and online. Last year, 50 between shows and online. Yeah. So, still growth overall, but more on the shows this time. Which makes sense, because okay. I, I didn't have as much time to focus on putting stuff online and doing all that kind of thing. Right. And you moved. Yes. The move was a big chunk. So, the last part was make a revenue of 80k uh, for the year. Do you want to guess what I hit? Um, with your, how many sections did you have? Three? Online, consignment, wholesale, shows. And then I, I didn't include teaching in there. So there's no teaching in there and there's no commissions in there. And there's no direct like one-to-one -one in that group either. Okay. I think you made 78,000. That's pretty close. 76.9. Yes. So I did not make wow. the 80, but like you said, I moved. Like, you moved, like it, and that was unplanned. Yeah, so if you if you were to think about the last couple months of the year, or last three months of the year, we moved in October, September, October. So basically I had to stop production, and I had to, I didn't have a couple shows. Like I didn't have my home show this year. I didn't mm -hmm. do some Christmas shows this year. So mm -hmm. I don't think I had almost any shows in November for the most part, or maybe it was October. I think yeah. I had one show in October and that was it. So yeah, I, you know, if I looked at my year over year for that part of the, of those months of the year, like it definitely dropped. Like I'm, I'm looking green, like above what I did last year, all the way through September. And then when I hit October, November, December, I sold about, seven thousand dollars less in those three months than i did last year okay so what were your expenses for the year did you calculate those yet yes so all expenses uh balance sheet uh it looks like it's about expenses fees uh a little over eighteen thousand I made a lot of profit. $58,900 in profit. Yeah. You made more money. <laughs> you made more oh, money uh, in profit. Yeah, a little, little less. I forgot about the mileage there, but. Whatever. Yeah. You made more money in profit than I have ever made in my entire fucking life. <laughs> You're talking about just sales-wise? I'm talking about anything wise, like any job that I've ever had. I've never made fifty eight thousand nine hundred dollars. I don't know that I don't know that all the taxes that I've paid are part of that number, but regardless, that's amazing, Ryan, and I'm really proud of you. Thank you. You see, you're an upstanding citizen in the business world. <laughs> If you had to pay yourself, that's an that's an actually I did start paying myself. I probably need to add that as a expense item, or maybe I don't. That's an, add expense. That's an expense. How item. much did you pay yourself? So I think in I think I started paying myself in August, maybe August or July, and I started paying myself seventeen fifty. I think a month. One thousand seven hundred fifty. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, so um, minus 1,750 times. Um, Just say like four months. I think it was about four months, maybe. Four. 51,900. I think that's what I was paying myself. 
It's hard to remember what I was. <laughs> yeah. Still more than I've ever been paid, but that's okay. <laughs> Actually, probably not. I've, I think I've made 50k. Oh, I was in the wrong. I was in the wrong account. I was looking to see what. I, yeah, seventeen fifty. I pay myself seventeen fifty, the last day Good. of every month. I'm glad that month. you do that. Yeah. I think that's really important. It keeps a consistent, and I've you know, log. I've never done that before. So. Yeah, I think that's so important, and 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 like, it. Like I said, it's it's good for consistency in the future. If you ever had to buy a house or anything like that, you could show them that you paid yourself this much money, you know? Yeah. Um, which isn't that much uh, a month. But yeah. And it's really just regardless. moving a number from one account to the other account that's side by side with Correct. it. So it's, a, it's not really Correct. significant. I mean, it does help me a little bit to look at, I do tend to look at my bank account number. Like when I go into my ceramics and I'm like, Ooh, that bank, that number's nice. Like, yeah. You know, I want to get it over this threshold next year, and it'll be like a nice celebration when I get it over that threshold. Not that anything's going to change and I'm going to spend a bunch of money, but something's going to happen when I get to that threshold, and I'll be like, yeah, pat on the back. Pat on the back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you should be really proud of yourself. Thank you. And I tended to not look at the goals at all I honestly didn't even open these goals until the end of the year so yeah and um do you want me to say oh well, if you want to you can i asked him how much is in the pottery bank account well get you don't have to i don't care well i mean it's all my money right so it's all my ceramics money that has been in the business because you've been saving for a long time. I've been saving since 2016, basically. In that account. Yeah. Okay, there's $86,000 in that account. Hell fucking <laughs> yeah. When I was seeing the threshold, I was saying like the $100,000 threshold. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking proud of you. Your, your goals, your life goals, life goals. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait until you go full time and like I'm going to get more stressed rewards. about it. <laughs> yeah, you will, but it'll be fine. Like that number up there should make me feel oh, I can like that's plenty of runway. Cuz yeah. you know, you hear about like, oh, you leave your job, make sure you have enough runway that'll get you X number of months until you can make sure you're confident in keeping the the number going up. And not yeah. just draining. But I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to keep it going up and keep pushing myself to yeah, keep within reason of not killing myself with the production level. Which I think I'm hitting that point where it's like a little bit of a tipping point of like on the yeah. edge. But, you know, pricing my stuff, increasing my prices of things can help that tipping point come down a little bit. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's also important to note if you are new to this or whatever, that bank account for Ryan, I think that some people, if you hear that number, you're like, that's absurd. Why would you keep that much money just in that account? And he is saving that money so he can go full time eventually. Like this is a long term goal that he has set. So, yes, it should be noted that it's not like it's not just like an empty eighty whatever thousand dollars, you know. Like there's a purpose for that. And so. if I need to buy something that breaks, I have no reservations about it. If I need it, I can just spend cash yeah. on it and buy it. Yeah, but I mean, like the fact that you are so frugal is the reason why that is so high now. So clearly, you've done something right. Except for the whole killing situation. We won't get into that. But <laughs> Not today. <laughs> not today. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, you should be really proud of yourself. What else are we talking about? So we got the money shit out of the way. Got the money stuff. We actually had some... I put some goals on here for podcast stuff on here. Oh, yeah. Did I do goals for... <laughs> Oh I thought gosh. we collectively agreed on the goals for the podcast stuff, I think. 
Did we? I think so. Okay. So we talked well, about them together. That. Well, you do that. I'm going to try and find my goals for 2021 that I wrote down in a spreadsheet somewhere and see how astronomically I failed. But when did so. you do? Did you plan at the very beginning of 2021? Like yeah, when, before I knew it was even. Yeah, when you were moving and stuff. I mean. Oh, wait, no. I mean, you were moving at that point. Why would you have set goals? I thought when we talked. Oh, we didn't. I thought I didn't when we talked, you were like, I'm not going to set goals. I'm just going to kind of find my bearings and then. That's to true. See that's what true. you Never enjoy mind. making. I think that's. I was thinking of 2020. I think that was your goal was to kind of like get your groove of like what you wanted to make personally yeah. and what you're going to enjoy spending your time doing outside of your production day to day. Yeah. It's because in my mind, I'm remembering me sitting at Marisa's table doing the 2020 goal one like episode with you and i'm forgetting i just completely skipped past the 2021 i have no idea where we did that it was in like the move and i wasn't mm -hmm. uh, obviously was not like coherent so yeah okay what were our podcast goals okay let's see if we hit them so increase reach of wheel talk pod podcast release 125 episodes where are we at we released 120. We released 126 within the year, because our well, last episode yes. technically went live on January 21st or January 1st. Hell yeah, so. we're badasses. I think we had a couple. Sh that's where we threw in the short ones too. So I think we got an mm -hmm. extra one on there than what we would yeah. have had. That was just a. As long as we keep consistent, and release every single week, then we're gonna hit 125. That's kind of how that 125 was yeah. decided on. We had interviewed 12 other makers. Whoa, I don't think we, we interviewed did that. 10. <gasps> no! And we, we based that 12 on just trying to interview somebody once a month, is kind of how we came up with that 12. Well, there was a snafu in the fact that we can use your house as a, um, as a, what's the word? Recording studio? <laughs> no, your house is our, um, it's not a complaint. No, it's our. Uh, it's what? What do we say when we have a when we have oh, location? Shit. No, the house is the reason why we didn't do something. Oh, it's, the, uh, it's our uh, excuse. <laughs> yes, our excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Move. Oh, you moved. Sorry, you couldn't interview two more people. <laughs> You didn't have internet. <laughs> but, yeah, so 12 other makers. I, Yeah, I think 10 felt good, though. I mean, yeah, we kind of went on a little run there, and we probably talked to people in yeah. a short, like, three or four-week span and interviewed three people, and then we kind of went on a lull and didn't interview anybody for a while. So, yeah. Yeah, it might not hurt for us to get a little bit ahead and think about who we want to talk to and maybe plan it out a little bit. And see if we can. Like at PlayCon West. Yeah. I mean, we'll we definitely have some other people it. in the room when we, yeah, when we're, we're together there, and then we'll get some new yeah. voices on there for that. Yeah. Well, and it will be great, honestly. Like um, I told you this, I I can't remember when, but um, the people that we're staying with at PlayCon West. Oh, I told you in the last episode. They are, it will be actually a really interesting couple to interview. So, um, if they're down for it, which I can't imagine they wouldn't be. All right. So, wait a second. Did you count me going to uh, the Indianapolis Clay Conference as a guest? I think I did. Oh, damn it. Okay. I don't, the only one I'm not sure of, I'm not sure if I considered Rachel as a guest or not. Yeah, she's a guest. I said other makers, but I mean, technically, I guess, yeah. She's it's a wife. guest, yeah. Uh, either way, we, we didn't hit 12. Yeah, regardless. Okay, right. what else? How many Instagram people? We're not there yet. Oh, okay. The next one was get paid by at least one sponsor. We did not, yeah, no, that we did not get paid by a sponsor, but we did start a Patreon. We didn't have Patreon on here, actually. We are getting paid I think we, by somebody. I think we added Patreon this year. I think we're honestly getting paid more from Patreon than we would from somebody paying us for ads. 
Possibly, yeah. We Depending get, like, on how it was bucks. structured, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see if maybe there's some things we could throw in and I offer for the Patreon make... a little bit. Yeah, I think that that would be a great goal for this year is to make Patreon a little bit more of a, hey, we want to do this because it's exclusive, you know? Yeah. I'd even be willing to say, like, I want to give away some pots or something or, you know, have some something that we come up with that's exclusive that shows yeah. that we're putting a little more effort than we have been in there. <laughs> yeah. I have been putting all the, not exactly when they go live, but I've been putting some old recordings on there. So if people are patrons and they don't know it, most of our old episodes from like episode 70 something are video with Becca and I, like when we're talking, you can see the, I mean, it is webcam, and you can see us, but we're talking through the episode, and it's exactly what what we talk about on the recording, but you also might get five minutes before we start, and then five minutes after we start, or whenever we decide to stop recording, and... Yeah, sometimes we stop so we can say juicy shit. Yeah, or we say juicy shit on the thing, I don't know. And then we're like, fuck, and then we turn it off really quick. And then we started releasing ones with some of the interviewees as well. So if you don't know what they look like and you want to see them or yeah. see what they're showing or whatever, um, you can check that out. So, all right. Next one was start selling something more than stickers to help fund wheel talk podcast. We did not do that. Yeah. The only other thing was we got donations from pot swap, but I wouldn't say that's well, considered that's selling something. No, because that's not... And that doesn't not, technically not fund profit. Wheel Talk podcast. Yeah. But... I mean, you could consider Patreon selling something, technically. Technically, That yeah. funds it. All right. I mean, yeah, like, we... Okay, yes. We don't pay for the website. I feel like that's a, right. a goal that was... Like, Patreon pays for the website, which is... As yeah. good as like it's great. I mean, the fact that we don't we don't get paid to do this, we don't have ads, which is huge. We're like the only fucking podcast without ads, and are you talking about the only like, pottery one? No, I've been listening to ninety nine percent invisible, and every single like they're only five minute episodes, and at the beginning of every single one, there's fucking ads, and I'm like, this is so annoying. That's how they fund it. That's how they have their professional salaries being paid. I know. That's annoying. <laughs> anyway. Unless you pay an exclusive membership and then you get no ads. Ad free. No ads. Ad free. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. The next ones are more of the numbers. Uh, reach a thousand listeners slash downloads, which are considered unique downloads within the first 90 days of release. We hit 1,051. No fucking shit. Yeah, January 2020. Nice. Yeah, it looks like in January 2021 we were at 660. So, it's pretty good. We're getting, you know, it's getting close to double. Our podcast predictor is 1045, actually. That's the... Oh, it might have changed a little bit since the last time I looked. Yeah, it fluctuates. So, yeah, pretty good. I think having other guests on helps us with numbers sometimes with getting mm -hmm. getting new listeners in and then they can kind of dig into other episodes if something interests them or whatnot so all right next one was ig followers reached three thousand. do you think we reached that no no we're at uh 2196 no we're at 2206 well we were at 2196 when january first hit oh well you're all fancy and shit and like planned it planned it <laughs> so i how would you and this is kind of putting you on the spot but how would you feel if somebody else helped us with like instagram i'd fucking love it are you kidding me i is feel there, bad every single time is there a listener you, out there that is willing to uh help us out if you want to reach out to us we could pay you with the rest of our uh, we could we could we could pay somebody like not very much, but we could pay you. 
<laughs> but I like feel bad every single time because to be honest, I cannot figure out how to get my notifications on. <laughs> you mean like when messages come in? Yes, I can't figure it out. And then I forget about it. And then you're like, there's a message here. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I would be more than willing to answer almost all of the messages. But I can't figure out how to get the fucking notifications to work because I'm 90. <laughs> and it's like. Can't you see <laughs> when you do the Switch account? If you do the Switch account, you can see that it says like two messages or whatever. Right, but I never switch the account. That's the difference. Like, oh. but I see all of I see all of the notifications for um, Wheel Talk, or not Wheel Talk for Pot Swap, and I don't know why I see all the Pot Swap ones, but not all the, um, the not other. Not all the Wheel Talk ones. You need to turn. Maybe it's notification. Yeah, maybe you need to check the settings. And see I just what's what going I on. actually need to do is give you my fucking phone when we're at ClayCon West, so you can figure it or out. Or when you come I, here beforehand, or whatever. Yeah, because I can't figure it out. I'm sure we've got a, a <laughs> listener out there that would be willing to help us if somebody's so inclined. Yeah, that would actually make our feed look fucking good. And you could just find potters and just repost pot, like stories and shit and like repost. Or if there's like, you know, we know we used to do sound clips when episodes were coming out but if even if we had just a weekly hey a new episode's coming out here's what it's about yeah if there's at least that i you know it it's enough to manage one instagram account so managing that and and you do a lot on instagram because i'm so inept so <laughs> it's like and i'm so sorry i mean i'll, I'll just I'm have really... random thoughts that is like this is perfect for <laughs> wheel talk because if i put on my personal one like okay it's tailored to potters but there's people that aren't potters that follow me but this is like okay this yeah. is like niche wheel talk discussion or wit you know good for the the wheel talk audience to give us some feedback yeah. on or whatever or whatnot and it's cool yeah, like we do get messages after new episodes come out like give it like a couple days within the release yeah. of it and we'll get comments about the newest episode that came out and it'll come through as messages so yeah i think that would be great yeah like building up the instagram so it's i really do love the way that paul does his instagram where he just like highlights other potters and i think that that's like a lot of why he's successful you know, other than the fact that he gets every single fucking potter on the planet on his show. But, like, mm -hmm. like he's going to run out of potters pretty soon. I wonder how he's doing right now where Instagram is really propping up the people that are sharing reels. Because if you don't post a reel, you're basically getting a fraction of the likes that you would have in the past with a photo. I'm not. You also have heavy engagement with your posts on a regular basis, and you don't post that frequently, yeah, so you probably got, do okay. I got 492 likes on my post that says, I won't be doing a top nine post this year because I have absolutely zero idea how to do What's that. What's the last picture post before <laughs> that? What did you get likewise on those? Before it? Yeah, the one before it. Oh, well, that was a painting. You can't count that. It was not What's pottery. the last pottery photo that you have that... 286 likes. Yeah. But that's pretty standard. Um, the uh, I'm around 200 to 300. Uh, the the that one was special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one's probably shared a lot too, and reposted. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yep. So, I would love some help with that though. Yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah, it's hard to, like, planning goals out for me is, it's a little tougher because there's so many things that I work on, and it's like, you know, where do I spend my time, and I would love to spend more time doing X when I have to spend other times doing Y and Z because they they keep me going, or I have shows coming up, or, you know, I'm dedicated to teach a workshop or something, you know. Right. I commit to things or I'm, you know, the treasurer of Clay Alliance. So it's like, you know, I have to do certain things that I've committed to. And until I stop doing those things or find a way to delegate things that I do for those other, those other commitments, then, you know, it's going to take time away from things that I would like to do more of. So. Yeah. Gosh, I can't wait until we do our 
2022 um, goals. I like that we're doing this in two episodes because now I'm really excited. <laughs> it's not so overwhelming to do it all at once. Yeah, kind of nice. Well, yeah, I think it's it's good to break it up for sure. Can we talk about um, can we talk about personal stuff? Like, I feel like uh, even though I didn't have goals, I feel like I've had a very successful year mentally. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so um, I don't have depression anymore. Big win. I am on depression medication, but not for depression, for fibromyalgia. But that also has been uh, reined in. Not fixed, but reined in. When you say depression anymore, what is that like? Is that just a state where you're like, you know, I don't feel the same way as a situation where I would be more depressed a year ago? Is it like knowing what your mindset is when you're in a certain situation and you're like, I don't feel that way anymore or I'm not in those situations so it doesn't cause? Uh, No, depression is like a disease. So it's like you have it all the time. There's no situations. So it's like I think the situations can um, make it more aware or make Make, it more evident. make Make it more evident, but it usually just lingers in the background, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, and you just think the overall not having the shop is general or are there positive things that have happened? (laughs) No, I think that, but I think that the, actually the medication. Oh, okay. It was kind of like a win, win situation. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, so that, and that has helped (laughs) pretty pretty massively because i still had pretty bad depression when i was still when i was here and then i finally went and uh like went to the doctor but um yeah and i moved within my apartment complex to a two-bedroom apartment which has been great because i have a a little art room in there that i can work in and i don't know um, if it's quite a bedroom but it's a it's a spare room it's a spare room. It, yeah, it's supposed to be a bedroom. It will be my guest bedroom. If you had anything bigger than a twin bed, it would not be walk aroundable. No. I think a full maybe. It'd be tight. Maybe. Be tight. But yeah, like I'm going to have to sleep in that room and then my guests will sleep on my bed. But um But yeah, so that's been good and I bought a lot of art this year, which has been really fun. And um, work is good, and I'm overall very happy. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you do... You went on... What? Did you do some... You did a trip with us. Did you go on other trips and go visit some other people this year? I went to Washington once. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think I did anything else. It was... It, I was busy, and I, and, I, and I did... Financially, I took a hit this year... Because in Monroe, everything was expensed and, like, I traded for food and all these things. You know, there was, like, a lot of variables that I didn't, like, I knew was going to change, but I didn't really know how it was going to change. So, I did hit it, take a hit, like... Plus your apartment, like, I mean, you're just your rent by itself, probably. Right, like, I didn't have rent before because um, I... Didn't have rent because I lived in my office that my business owned that was $300 a month anyway. So, um, you know, it uh, was, yeah, it was, um, look at- I'm looking at my W-4. It doesn't look like it. Oh, like schmear, schmear, schmear. Um... The W-4 is not what I need. Uh, I was going to look and see how much I made this year versus how much I made last year. You know, like how much, not really how much I made last year, but um, it looks like my take-home pay this year was probably a little bit over 27000 So, like, maybe thirty five. Mm-hmm. 35000 which is medium to low. Medium to, it's mid to lower income. (laughs) Would you say that you were overall happier making that amount of money? Let's say you made that same amount of money last year at 
what you were doing. Was it a happier way that you're making that money this year than last year? I'm sure it took a yeah, lot less sure. stress was, to get. It was a lot less work. A lot less work yeah. this year? Yeah. You got more bang for your buck there. Yeah, for sure. For sure. A lot more bang for my buck. And I overall, like, less, way less stress, way less, like, body angst. Like, way less. Yeah, I mean, even making, like, literally not very much money. Um, it totally, I'm totally fine Do you, with it. I, yeah. the way I look at that, it's kind of like you can see where your skill set is to a point where you're valued to a point and you, you get to not work easier, but like it's more consistent and your, your time is valued and your skill set is valued more that you yeah. get paid appropriately for it or more appropriately yeah. for it than if you yeah i in. mean like that's yeah that's the thing it's like i made thirty five thousand dollars right but i only work six hours four to six hours a day four days a week like i mean most of this year i worked five days a week but i like being where i am and i just kind of fucked around the whole time and like i mean not really but you know i chose how much money i made mm -hmm. it wasn't like i could have made more if I wanted to. And at the beginning it was hard. I was still trying to figure out my health and everything like that. And so I wasn't making as much. I think that next year I'll probably make around 50 if I can do it right. You know, mm -hmm. I'm throwing bigger stuff and, or maybe not 50, but like 40 at least. And so, um, which is plenty. Yeah. I mean, my rent's only a thousand bucks, which is a lot, but it doesn't matter. Like, you know, I would love to get to a point where, well, and, you know, my goal is to make $3,000 on the side um, in the pot business. And I think that that's actually still, I still think that that's doable. Yeah. $3,000 so. a month on the side? Yeah. 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 And that would bump it up to almost $70,000. So. Yeah. That'd be a lot of money. 3000 bucks is a lot to sell per month on the side. It's, you would it think. Seems like it. Yes, it is. It is. No, it is. But, like, if I sell 15 fancy cups, that's fa that's half of it. And then if yeah. I go to a show. Because that seems like I go two. To some shows, that's like two good shows for me. Like, 1500 bucks at a show is pretty decent. Yeah. And having two of those every month. Yeah. I want to do the farmer's market. And, um,. Yeah, I think that this year I've really, what I, what I'm the most excited about is that I've finally, like, accepted the fact that I am who I am. Like, all my, all my existence, they've been like, Becca, you can't have shitty cups. <laughs> like, you can't do that. And I'm finally like, you know what, fuck it. I like this is literally the only way I know how to exist because every other way I fail at because I'm not good at it. I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not good at making my booth look nice. Like that's just <laughs> or you not don't care my... enough to like. Yeah, it's to... just like not my skill set. And so finally being able to be like, you know what, you, you need to make it look like shit <laughs> and like and like you need to just like give into it is just embrace the shitty life, Becca. Em embrace it i like like somebody i can't remember i was like they need to just let me be mediocre i need to be mediocre in the at this point in my life and it's been working quite well for me honestly <laughs> i i was gonna talk about that <laughs> uh, we found a post on facebook that oh gosh. is a grilled a grilled cheese truck that somebody did as an art project and i'm not gonna read all of it but literally it says one dollar grilled cheese, no char no change given, short out your own shit. <laughs> and and it's the menu is one dollar shitty grilled cheese and that's it. If you want a tomato slice, no. <laughs> and and I was like, that's me. I'm that. That is what I strive for. So anyway, I'm really just happy that I've finally like given into the I think I thrive in the shitty life and 
in the sense where it isn't shitty anymore because it's funny, you know? It, yeah. like, it works its way around. <laughs> and that fits your personality, like. It totally does. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. <laughs> so, wait, you went on trips with your parental. Yeah, I, you actually told me that. I was looking back, you are like, uh, a couple weeks ago, you were like, we should talk about 2021 as, like, a personal and then do a business one later. And I was like, what did I do personally this year besides move? So, um, yeah, we did start off the year. We did, we were in Phoenix for New Year's Eve last year and then visited Becca and Josh in Indiana for a bit. I think that was like a long weekend yeah. kind of deal. And then Becca reminded me that we went to Austin and Kansas City separately with each of our parents. Um, yeah. Rachel's family, we went to Austin and then my parents, we went to Kansas City, so... Those were some fun, like, long weekend trips. And why did you do that? Because you decided last year that you're doing yeah, um, adventure I gifts. Th- I don't know if that was an adventure thing. I think it was just a... I'm trying to remember what time of year it was. Yeah, it might have been... Christmas. That was your Christmas gift to your parents. Maybe. No, it was, for sure. 100%. It was. I thought it was planned around a, a birthday, and that's why we went to... I think the... Yeah, we went to Austin around Rachel's birthday, and I I thought that was in kind of celebration ish for Rachel. And we said nope. we want to go to. I mean, maybe not. I don't know. Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. I I couldn't even remember that we went anywhere until I looked back at my calendar. So, <laughs> and then uh, and then we went. Is Rachel upstairs? Yeah, she is. I'm texting her. And then we went to Kansas City during June. During June. That sounded kind of country when I said that. During June. Um, I can't remember what that was for, but we did go on like a baseball trip, which is cool. We went to the stadium in Kansas City. We hadn't been there before. So I think we did kind of plan that just to do a family trip somewhere that had yeah. baseball. Yeah, because your dad loves baseball. Well, our whole family likes baseball, so. Yeah, everybody does. Yeah. And I did go on site to Raleigh for a week for work. That was fun in, I don't remember when that was, September? That was pretty fun. That was Mm -hmm. the first time I'd actually seen coworkers since September of 2019. I hadn't seen anybody I worked with for two years. That's crazy. And the last time I saw them was at that same kind of conference that they had in person two years prior. So that's crazy. That was pretty great, actually. I mean, I, I try to preach that a lot with like people that I work with just through the pandemic. I was like, I hope that people realize that when you all have to work remotely, like you get a feeling for what people that work remotely on 100 percent of the basis like feel like when you don't get to see each other. And I'm like, I want to be able to go visit the the office once a quarter or one, twice a year, yeah. like at least twice a year. And it's like we always had to struggle for budget to get approval to go and go to the office. And it was like getting harder and harder to get budget approval to have us come visit each other. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you know. But now a lot of people are, you know, they're – near an office and they're like i'm not going to the office because i got this work life thing figured out working remotely for two years you know yeah so they're like uh why do i want to go to an office i got you know i got i got to pick my kids up from school and i get to you know eat lunch at home and i get to you know go for a walk or walk the dog or whatever you know they kind of figured that out and it's like they kind of found their own remote working situation their own way uh rachel has confirmed that you were correct it was for her birthday Okay. So. Yeah. I think we were, well, with her side for Christmas, we were planning on, like, dinner. Like, a dinner. A fancy dinner, that's what she said. That's what, at least that's what we planned for this this year's Christmas. So, I don't know about last Christmas, but we might have done something similar to that. And then the biggest part was, uh, well, we did the trip with you and Rachel. Mm -hmm. That was in, was that August? beginning of august yeah it was so much fun that was great yeah we need to do more trips like that 
I agree. I'm, that was like the funnest. That was the funnest text too. You're like, so uh, I have a week off. I have a let's go enforced PTO week that the whole company's yeah. taking mm-hmm. off. Can we uh, do something here? Yeah. I, and then I got massively sick. Yes. Afterwards. Yeah. I'm. I want to like. I kind of selfishly want to go visit Pitch Pine, Tar, Tar and Matt in Vermont. Like that Ooh, place looks I'm amazing. Coming. Can we go? We said we wanted to go, and you want to do all that driving, so I feel like you should go. We should go. Yeah, let's do it this year. That's our goal. Tara, get ready. She doesn't listen, but get ready. <laughs> and then we can stop and probably see Heidi along the way. Michigan's probably along the way, maybe-ish. No, it's not. Negative. Okay. Maybe we could see somebody else we on the way. We may be able to see Tim C. Okay. I don't know Tim that much, but I know a little bit. Um, But... uh. Yeah, no, I think it's like oh, I, I actually we could every see, uh, CRW designs. She's in New Hampshire. Oh yes, she's close to yeah. Um, every time they like post something, and I'm always like, I'm get ready, get your couch ready, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, we're ready. Is there like <laughs> Go. for one, I want to meet them, but also like I want to meet their cats. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if there's any other cat that i want to meet it's hanu and mook like this is so true and then they're gonna be like who the hell are you and they're gonna be scared off and they're not gonna show attention so yeah you know it's it's gonna be what it is but <laughs> ryan's heart's gonna be broken on the first day but it'll be fine <laughs> and katie actually has a cute cat too uni oh my god very cute yeah very cute so so yeah, that was a big trip, and then we moved homes. So that was that was probably the biggest and most sudden thing that happened this year. Yes. We weren't planning on it. I think we were getting ahead of it because we were getting at capacity with the house, and you know, long term we were looking for me being able to do this pottery thing yeah. and give that a go. So we were like, you know, we, I mean, housing situation was kind of crazy last year, but or this year last year whatever and uh but we found it and got it at the price we wanted and we got sold our house and got a nice fat check from that and you know working toward uh making improvements here already so so how soon are you gonna pay this house off i don't know (laughs) it's not we're not on the uh the same i don't i don't know that we're on the dave ramsey uh you know pay your house off as quickly as possible plan but I think we we still did a thirty year. We were thinking about doing a fifteen year, but we just did thirty year. We can still pay That's, it as a fifteen year though. Just if you pay it as a fifteen year, it, double those it's, uh, double those house payments every month. Yeah, and it decreases your interest significantly. But you know what? Yeah. Some people say is that you should just put all that money that you would have doubled your house payment into the stock market and make more than what you would have paid in interest. And yeah, even if you put it into an eight percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Index fund. Yeah. We still have money invested, so it's not like we, uh, yeah. So we're we're playing it pretty easy on the house payment so far. Nice. But yeah, I would say that's. Live your life. That's, Live your best fucking life. Yeah, that was probably the biggest stuff from this year, takeaways, was all the trips and stuff. And... Yeah. Get it. I don't know. I feel like I feel like my stress level just looking back at the year was a lot more was on average probably higher. Yeah. Than la- the the previous year probably because of the the work needs like one of my coworkers the other like lead with me. He was on paternity leave for 4 months. And I, oh, wow. I had to do a lot of, um, I had to do a lot more work, I guess work. It was, it was more stressful on a average day than, you know, previously. That's where it's like, it's nice to just be an individual contributor and you get tasks assigned to you and you're like, all right, I'll figure this out and I'll do it. And on to the next task. 
<laughs> but when you have other shit you got to do, it's more stressful. <laughs> so, hopefully this year is less of that. But I don't yeah. know. It'll it'll probably be comparable, but I think hopefully we can make some decisions to make it a little less stressful. Yeah. But God damn it. What? I'm I'm listening, but I just remembered that I didn't pick something up at Costco that I needed to get. <laughs> Did you go to Costco today? I went there yesterday. <laughs> What'd you forget? Mixed nuts? No. <laughs> I forgot bubbly water. Bubbly water. I forgot. I forgot the brand, though, what it's called. The fancy Spindrift. Kind. Yeah, that one. You know, Rachel gets that. She said, You're welcome. She said you were to blame for every new water decision or new drink decision that she I gets. Am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I introduced her to the ice flavors yep. that are like delicious but they hurt my head and then i for a bit. and then i made her start drinking the spindrifts when we were on our trip <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> those ones are expensive too spindrift yeah they're they're kind of pricey honestly but she was looking at one of those soda streams and she was like i mean it's not i mean you gotta like get the new canisters and stuff right Pretty frequently when yeah. you get the streams. And and so the canisters cost thirty dollars. They are more cost effective. I will give I'm sure you that. they are. They're way more cost effective, but the canisters cost thirty dollars. And then if you take them to Target, you can um, exchange them for fifteen. So if you like found an old like I had an old canister from like two thousand two, and um, or whatever like two thousand twelve something. I don't know something ridiculous. And um, it's just like a CO two container. Yeah, that Sarah got at a garage sale, and so I took it into Target, and they actually took it back and exchanged it for fifteen dollars. So um, she got like a whole uh, soda stream and two canisters for ten dollars. <laughs> so <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> um, but yeah, and the problem with soda stream is that it doesn't taste the same. Like they know what they're doing when they make those stupid fucking bubbly waters <laughs> in a can. <laughs> Like, those natural flavors that come from who even knows what, they're delicious. Just delicious. They're just delicious. Yeah, I have to convince yeah. her that that flavored water is not water. When you say, how much water did you drink today? You can't include the flavored water. That is not yeah. water. You can, actually. Um, it, it, certain ones. You I'll can. be like, how much clear if water? If it doesn't have... If it doesn't have sodium in it, you can include no it. No bubbly. Have you had today? No bubbly. Or just crystal light. I don't know. That's like calling tea water. Like, how much water did you have? I, I'm I mean, not gonna tea call is it. water. I know, but it's got sweetener in it, and it's got tea in it. I mean, if it's okay. straight, sure. Maybe you can call that water. Yeah. But it's better than whatever. Like, it's better than it could be. It could be worse. Definitely could be worse. Okay, I'm looking up Spindrift's ingredients. Um, there's zero grams of sodium. So this would be considered water. What about the flavoring? Water, what about the flavoring stuff? Um, for for them, they don't ever put any natural flavors. So it, the ingredients are carbonated water, grapefruit juice, orange juice, lemon juice, and hibiscus. You said no natural flavors? You mean artificial flavors? They don't put any no, artificial? I mean natural flavors. Because like sometimes in like if you look on a LaCroix, it says natural flavors. And natural flavors can include almost anything. Oh, okay. That sounds like yeah. that's that sounds like artificial flavors is what you it want to avoid. Is. But when it says with natural flavors, that's kind of like a fancy way of saying artificial flavors. Yeah. What does art? What does natural flavors mean? 
Oh, it's not going to be quick. Wait, 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 nope, can't find it. But yeah, like, from what I've heard, natural flavors is like, mm. A little iffy. A government, re oh, government regulations define natural flavors as those that derive their aroma or flavor chemicals from plant or, an plant or animal sources, including fruit, meat, fish, spices, herbs, roots, leaves, buds, or bark that are distilled, fermented, or otherwise manipulated in the lab. That's a, that's a very um, wide <laughs> range of things. Yeah. So, like, if you have a LaCroix that has natural flavors, it doesn't necessarily come from fruit. It could come from a fish. And it's just formulated in such a recipe that it tastes a yeah, certain way. Yeah, that it way. tastes like, yeah. Like, and, I mean, obviously, it's probably not fish, but, like, it could be. You know, so mm -hmm. that's what they mean when they say natural flavors. <laughs> they are natural, manipulated in a lab, <laughs> naturally manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Naturally manipulated. Naturally manipulated. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Anything else today? I don't know where don't we're at. So. We're close to 140. That's pretty good. Yeah. We did pretty good. It's 12 o'clock. Yeah. So, uh, wrapped up the year. I would say overall pretty happy with 2021. And uh, we'll see yeah. what we got for 2022. We'll, we'll get with you here soon for 2022. Looking forward yes. to... I think we're probably going to release this while we're at ClayCon West. Yeah. But we're looking forward to seeing everybody. If you... Listen to this at ClayCon West. Come say hi if you haven't already. But don't touch us if you don't know us, by the way. Yeah, say hi, my name is, and put your hand out. Or And if you want to hug us, say, can I give you a hug? That's the proper etiquette, and then we can say yes or no. Say that to Becca first. She's more probably more of a hugger than I am. But Yeah, don't hug Ryan. I might hug you, but we'll see. I'm squishier. <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay anyway all right thanks everybody for listening yeah thanks hope you had a good year yeah happy new year Woo. three weeks late <laughs> <laughs> bye <right>. bye <laughs> yo 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 giddy yo it's becca here hey just so you know Thank you for listening. And also, we have... What do we have again? A Patreon. a Patreon. We have a Patreon that you should go and... If you want to donate to, you could donate to it. If you don't, that's cool too. But um, just Google Wheel Talk Podcast Patreon. Don't do the other one. Because uh, there is a Wheel Talk on Patreon, but it's not us. So make sure you get the right one. It's and in the show notes. It's in the show notes. And also, um, leave us a review because they're fun to read. Okay, bye!